<laughs> okay, my name is Shelby Ross, and I'm Chickasaw. And so, um, I'm going to be the one that's going to be giving you your herb walk today. Now, I am going to tell you whenever um, we kind of walked the area yesterday, trying to get in a feel and seeing what was out here. Um, there's not as much as I expected. It's probably because I suspect they're in a drought. Um, and so that might be some of it, but there was still quite a bit. The very first thing that I saw was soap berries. I'm rather familiar with soap berries. They're good friends of mine. Um, these, they're also called china berries, but you can take several of these. They're not edible, first of all, so don't eat it. It's like eating soap. You'll give yourself stomach issues. Um, but you can take a cluster of the berries, about five or six of them, put it in a reusable tea bag or like a cloth sack, throw it in your washing machine, and it'll actually wash your clothes. And so it's a real good natural, chemical-free laundry detergent that you can literally pick off of a tree. And you can reuse the berries several times. You can reuse them two, three, four, five times. Um, and then the actual seed of the berries, we'll, there's several of them around here. There's a lot of these trees. So as we're walking, I'll find another one and I'll pick it up and show you because the inside of the berries, or the inside of the <coughs> thing is the actual seed. And the seed is a real dark color. And those were used for jewelry as beads. Mm -hmm. And you would boil it to get it because it's a really hard seed. So you would boil it and then be able to stick the needle through and just thread them together and make a necklace or anything like that. So there's a lot of those out here. And like I said, that was the first one I noticed. Were they, were they used for church sashes or anything like that, like the mezcal beans? Yeah, they would okay. be used like that. Okay. All righty. Let's go. The next one's going to be a little bit down the way here. <laughs> So the outside of the, uh, you only discard the soap berry when Now whenever you do any type of foraging or, I don't really like to call it foraging because foraging sounds like I'm just stomping through them take it all and like that sounds pretty harsh so I like to think of it more as wild crafting because we're going out into the wild and finding medicines or finding foods and it just doesn't sound so harsh <laughs> um, but the one thing you need to remember is a lot of these plants that you see they're food and medicine for the animals too so if we come to an area and even if it's something that we've been looking for for a long time and we see it, we're not going to be like, oh, and take all of it. Because you want to make sure that there's one, that there's enough so that the plant can propagate and keep growing and we don't make it go extinct in that area. Two, you <coughs> want to make sure that there's enough for the winged and four-legged relatives that might need that as well that live here. So. The general rule is you only take 10% and you leave the rest for nature. And so you want to make sure, and that's whether you're morel hunting or you're whatever, you always want to make sure that there's some left. You don't want to just take all of it. A good example of what happens whenever something just comes in quite a bit is, I don't know if anybody's heard of echinacea. That's a pretty common one. You can even buy it in Walmart. Well, in the 80s, that used to grow wild everywhere from about Oklahoma all the way through Kansas on the prairies. You would just see these beautiful purple flowers. Well, when the craze happened, all those got used up. And so it's very, very rare to find one in the wild now. A lot of the ones that you get from your medicines that you get in the teas were actually grown in gardens, and that's because it's really, really hard to find in the wild. So we don't want to do that to anything else, okay? These, <coughs> I'll let everybody pass these around. These are the soap berries. And when you, these are pretty dry. So these would not be good for using in your laundry right now. They come out in about 
to about the fallish is whenever they are ready. And they'll be really juicy, but these aren't. But this is what the seed looks like. Pass that around again. Let me see those. So the difference between like just looking at them, I can see the difference. But the hackberry has a, has a white pit, if I remember right, right? Oh, it, the hackberries are completely different from this. Yeah. The hackberries right. are smaller. Smaller, they're, they have a thick, thick skin that you can't see through. Yeah, I mean, they're smaller. They're they're dark maroon color. These are a light, right. um, you know, amber color. And the, is it seed color oh, right too? No. These are dark There's, and the uh, hackberries are white or light colored. Well, yeah, but I mean, they're they're completely yeah, different. Like there's it's no, there's no. But I'm no, talking about the seed. Exactly, exactly the seed like yeah. inside. Is it dark or white? It, it, and it's really small. Whereas yeah. these are really big. And then yeah. plus they're even the, the baby, see the yeah. you can look from the the um, bark of the tree. See how this bark looks? Yeah. A hackberry is going to have like, go, yeah, it's going to have like dots everywhere, like little, yeah, warty is a real good way to say it. The, the bark is completely different. The interesting thing here is the china berry that we have down in central Texas is an opaque china berry. These are translucent china berry. And the other thing that's interesting to me is look at the same bush that I got the hackberries on. Well, part of it is all of this medicine's out of it. Whenever it's all filled up, yeah. they're a yeah. the different color. Yeah, the, and the, it's harder to the you can't see through them. Then. This is mimicking the mesquite like tree that it sits yeah. in. Yeah, that's right. And at first that's I thought right. it was all mesquite, and then you pointed out that these are chan <laughs> berries or, or soap berries. And all of a sudden I realized, my God, there's mesquites and china berries side by side and you can't tell them apart. Well, that's yeah. what I first thought it too until we started setting up our tent. <laughs> and then I looked up and I was like, <gasps> There's berries. Mesquite trees don't have berries, they have beans. Anybody else have any questions about the soap berry? Okay, where do you keep going then? Oh. I still have some. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those are awesome. We're going to get some more. <laughs> <laughs> if you get an insect bite, you hey, take you know one what? Of if we put some on you, and you gash you like that, you'll get an Indian girl. They'll come running. Okay, this right here <laughs> will make you a fire. <laughs> this right here is sagebrush. It smells absolutely amazing. It has all types of uses. Here, I'm gonna let you pass it around so everybody can smell it. You can, of course, sage the area with you with it, and then smoke the area where you burn it. Or um, you can also make a tea out of it. It's really good for coughs and colds and that type of stuff. And also, you can make a tincture type thing from it with vinegar. And if you use vinegar, it's a really good at getting rid of mosquitoes and keeping bugs away from you. So I have a bug Minus spray. The vinegar, vinegar or with the vinegar? With, with the vinegar. <laughs> you can soak it in the vinegar to pull all the medicines out. And I actually have one that I make with the sage <laughs> and with plantain. And you let it set in a jar for like a month over and shake it up. And it pulls all the medicines from both of those. And we'll talk about plantain in a little bit. But it also works to repel bugs. So you might smell like vinegar, but you'll have like a hint of sage. <laughs> and it works, and it's chemical free. <laughs> if, if, if you're walking around or you're just out and you get a bug bite, you can take a couple of those little tips and chew them in the front of your mouth, not swallowing the juice, and then spit it out on the bug bite and rub it in, and it'll keep it from. Yeah, it'll uh, help with that. You know, getting red and hurting. Yeah, Plan it, it, I prefer plantain, but if you don't have plantain, oh. this or a yarrow. And so you also don't ever pull this from, you don't ever pull, because a lot of people come down and want to do this. So this is the type that we have in Oklahoma. This is a lot different because the ones in Oklahoma grow on a stem from the ground, up, mm -hmm. not on a bush. And I got, mm -hmm. I got some examples of that when we get back. But you want to take a little bit, and while we're on this one, because it's such a sacred plant, I want to talk to you one more about one more thing about whenever you're wild crafting or foraging or whatever you want to call it, when you're out gathering. 
that the plant is a living thing. It breathes. It <laughs> it's it's living, and so you don't along with not wanting to just take all of them, you also want to thank the plant because it's giving its life or it's giving a part of itself so that you can be healed or you can benefit from it in some way. And so you want to make sure you always tell the plant thank you, whether it's just a simple thank you as you're pulling something or if it's leaving tobacco or leaving cornmeal or leaving something for the plants and saying thank you. <coughs> Sometimes when I don't have anything else and I'm out doing it, I've been known to pull my hair and I'm like, here, a piece of me for a piece of you. So, I mean, whatever, but you wanna make sure that you recognize it in some way and not just, again, like, <laughs> <laughs> that's not cool. So just whenever you do take it, at the very least say thank you. Yes. And that's for all of them, not just, not just sage. So we do that when you take it. This is gonna. This would be a little bit hard to wrap because it's not very long. I guess when it gets longer, it'll be easier to wrap. And then you just take. Um, I use yarn. Wrap it from uh, the bottom up. And so, <clears throat> bottom meaning where you picked it from up. Um, and then the cl the cleansing properties in that will keep. Like if there's a cold, if there's uh, you got a family that's member that's sick. If you go sage that room, smudge that room, the properties of cleansing will still stay in there. Like they, it's been known that you will not find the bacteria. It's like an for herbal more than 24 oh, hours after Lysol. that's been sa smoked. Smoke. Do you have to yeah. wait till it dries? Yes, it's better. To, yeah. It's better to yeah. wait till it dries. Yeah. Yeah. Completely dries. But, but you, you you wind it what, while it's green. Yes. Okay. Yes, because it's. And it's cut, easier it's to work that way. Yarn. Otherwise, if you wait until it's dry to do it, it'll Correct. just break yeah, apart. Yeah, it's yeah. it's cotton it's yarn <laughs> uh, or cotton thread. I found work best because if you use the polyester thread, like most people do, mm -hmm. one that adds toxins, and two, it just mm -hmm. melts. It doesn't burn. Yeah. This is one of my favorites. I was really. I gotta tell you a little yeah. story about this one too. You don't want to breathe. Because, like she said, this doesn't look like the same thing we have right at home. And so whenever I came out and I was looking, I was looking for our sage. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't looking for any other type of sage. And I was, we were walking and we'd already gone and looked everywhere and came back and we were walking back this way. <coughs> and I was like, just like feeling kind of down for myself. I'm like, man, there's not really a lot to show. And I can't believe there's not sage here. Why is there not sage? There should be sage. And about that time, I looked over and I saw one of these here in this cluster. And it was like, it said, smell me, smell me. And so I just walked over and smelled it. And I was like, oh, I know you. You are Sage. You are here. I'm so happy to see you. Texas cousin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is where the wind came through. Smell it. We were walking just a little bit past here. And that wind came rolling. And I... We were, it was already past us, and I looked back. And, what is that sound? I was like, and it was like, I mean, it sounded like a freight train That's going double. past us, mm -hmm. and it came through, and I guess it, it picked up a stick. Yeah, it, the stick went up, and it went like, wow. and it went down. We were like, I, her and I were like, that was a spirit. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. I, we, that we was. really, I really enjoy this place. All right, let's go on. Now, I always thought these were really annoying, but they're very <laughs> just so. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. So this right here is a yucca, and um, yuccas, they'll they usually get a shoot that comes up, and they'll have these white flowers. Now I'm gonna tell you from personal experience. Yes, the flowers are edible. Do not eat the flower buds. <laughs> it has to have actually bloomed because otherwise it'll burn your mouth and it tastes horrible. But when it's actually bloomed, you can take the flower and you can fry it and it tastes really good. It kind of tastes like an artichoke yeah. um, a little bit. It's, and heifers it's really in a pasture will eat it before you can get to it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's a good point to me. It tastes like ice cream. Raw, yeah. yeah, they're really the cow candy. If you get those, <laughs> if you get those you buds the before they flower, it's kind of like some of the uh, Central American things. If you'll boil them 
and drain the water and put new water and boil them and do that three times. Like then it's like eating co it's like eating okra. It's I'm really good. I've done that. Yeah, on, the yeah. so, on the shoots, on the shoots, the flowers yeah, before that. they open, before they open, but yeah, the, the green shoots. Yeah, oh, I don't know. I don't, if, if <laughs> that, I don't know if I would. I don't know if I would recommend that. Yeah, the but, flowers are really yeah. alkaline, and because that's why you have to boil them, because if you don't boil the alkalis <laughs> off, then it'll give you a real bad case of stomach cramps and diarrhea. Yeah, mm. <laughs> I mean, I, really bad. You wish you hadn't eaten them. Like I can see salad. that. Like yeah. Salad, yeah. Yeah. Um, the root of the yucca is actually. Huh? Camote. That's what we call it down in our part of the country, like a sweet potato. Sweet okay. potato. Yeah. It um, can be beer. eaten, but also it has medicinal purposes. Um, well, the Navajo would use it as shampoo and to wash their hair with. And um, the root, you can also dry it and you can make a tea from it or even a um, oil from it. And it helps with arthritis. Um, I wouldn't suggest just like taking it unless you actually talk to a certified herbalist because of the dosage and that part of it. Mm. Um, but it it can be used for that. Do, do you do you know if, if the people because a lot of people are using the yucca root for arthritis? Mm -hmm. Do they dry it and make a powder out of it or what? It's, there's several different ways to do it, so it, each product probably makes it a little bit differently. Yeah. Whenever I use it, sometimes for um, stuff, I will um, put it in a, like in an oil with some other stuff. But okay, like you're making an oil. Like oil. oil. Uh -huh. What kind of oil? Olive oil. Olive oil. Mm -hmm. I always use olive yeah. oil. Yeah, I, I use extra virgin olive oil. Or I'll use Everclear. They make good salad. Whatever. Oh, I use that. Yeah. 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 This is a nightshade. It is poisonous. It gets berries. Do not eat the berries off of it. Do not eat anything from this one. Those of you that have um, cattle, your cattle doesn't need to eat it either. It's not good for anything. It does have a purple flower. It does yeah. have, it does have a purple pink. flower. No medicinal property. And it's also prickly, the plant itself. Yeah. yeah. The, the and nightshade that's what, is related to the tomato and yeah. the potato. There's solanines, and you can extract atropine, scopolamine, and hyoscyamine from it. We use all three of those in the medical profession. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you damn sure better know what you're doing yeah. when you extract it, because mm. otherwise it'll... If you ever read the teachings of Don Juan, mm. the guy thought he was flying because he would just rub it on him, you know? Uh, <laughs> other thing is, now there is something called ground cherries that often grows around the same uh, place as these. And ground cherries, they kind of look like a tamal palato or whatever it's called. It's got a husk on it. Is the difference. And it's that husk is how you know that it's a ground cherry as opposed to these that do not have husks. Yeah. They're poisonous. Are those the berries from that plant? Yes. Yeah, this is what they look like after they dry that's a out. Bad tomato. Yeah. <laughs> it's called a bad night tomato. Night bad tomato. Yeah. Yeah. Night Nightshade? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, bad tomato. Yeah. 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 Bad tomato. Yeah. Yeah. Is a plant is called a plantain. I'm gonna just pass it around. It's that one, right? Yeah, it's this one. It's also this one. It's got a... No, it's mine, Dad. Oh, it's... Uh-huh. I'm talking about it. This is one of my favorite, favorite plants. It's called plantain. It's called plantain. It's called plantain. Yeah. This will suck the poison out of bug bites, out of um, anything like that. Anytime I get bit, um, I go looking for this, and I chew it up, and I just stick it wherever it is because it just pulls it all out so you don't even have to worry about it also make salves out of this for the same reason it helps to um, heal wounds and also helps to pull um, the poisons out not necessarily um, you wouldn't make a salve for like poison ivy 
and since it's a different type of thing, it wouldn't really work too well with that. Um, but it works really good with bug bites. Um, also, you can make a tea out of this, and it's really good for coughs and colds um, as well. So like boiling it in a... Uh -huh. Just the leaf, or do you do the little... The root? The flower, the little flower. The root. The little, you can use the little flower part. That's oh. seeds. So if at all possible, you'd want to just leave that Did so it can reseed it? itself. Yeah. Yeah. Use the leaves. What is the ten percent rule? Yeah. <laughs> Aloe vera I use for burns a lot. That's about is this no. does it cook I mean salvia. Yeah, that's like, that looks more like a cactus plant. Yeah, yeah, it compares as far as the healing part goes. Right. Yarrow is another good one too, and there's not any yarrow um hmm. around here which kind of surprised me. But if you have yarrow Yarrow is amazingly medicinal. It, if you have a cut on your finger and you chew some of that up and you put it on, it'll instantly stop the bleeding. And it's antibacterial and antimicrobial, so it'll instantly start healing. I cut myself with my thumb one time while I was cooking. I mean, pretty good cut. Like, I mean, <laughs> I was going for, <laughs> I was going for bone. And um, I grabbed my thumb and ran outside mm -hmm. and grabbed some yarrow and chewed it up and put it on there and just kept it on there for about two days. By the third day, there was just a little, just a little tiny mark. And by the fourth day, you couldn't even tell I cut myself. How can you transplant it if you want to like move some to your garden or something? Yarrow? Yeah. You would just pull it by the, by the root and just transplant the whole plant it's that way. The root wouldn't kill it or hurt it, so. Um, as long as it's not for a long period of time. It's a long like, period. 10 minutes or 10 hours? 10 hours, I wouldn't do. 10 hours, I would like maybe just repot it into a plant and then take it home. You can take it in a little ball of, of dirt, wrap it in newspaper. I carry yeah. some, the little yeah. sandwich Ziploc bags yeah. when I'm mm -hmm. digging up plants. But I, some plants you don't have to dig up, like cactuses, you can just cut off a piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, the, yeah those you do. Yeah, but sure. Plantain and yarrow work really, really, really good together. Mm -hmm. And. There's, you're not going to find an herbalist around that doesn't just have wonderful things to say about this plant. This is the one that everybody loves. Not really. <laughs> not like, now that yarrow, if you can get the whole of that yarrow, it even tastes like that one. You, if you take it internally, if you have any type of blood issues, um, blood clotting issues, you're on any type of that medicine, you should not take yarrow internally. Um, but... The taste of it is like, you know when you get, um, oh, uh, like an antibiotic pill, like amoxicillin stuck in your throat? <laughs> <laughs> that, I tried to do that. That yeah, taste, right? that, that's what it tastes like. I mean, it's it's very strong. You can taste mm. the, it the medicine like in it. It tastes to me. I tasted it just a oh, minute ago, and it's like banana peel. <laughs> oh, no, not this one. I was talking about yarrow. Yeah, that one. In this, oh, yarrow. That's right. Yeah, no, that's plantain. It's plantain, yarrow. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's plantain. I don't, I don't know that I have a thing for that. That's mesquite. Mm -hmm. Can you use greenbrier? Yeah, that's that's. Mm -hmm. Is mesquite good yeah. for anything? <laughs> I've heard that it is, but I can't remember what I've heard, and I've never used it, so I don't know for sure. Yeah, the patch is ground up the only willow. And yeah, again, that one and that one's one. Water a couple of times to lower the alkalinity <clears throat> and then dry it and grind them up and make this fire. This one is not. Little, yeah, the yeah. bark, bark gives it away. Yeah, mm. yeah, the bark. It's high in carbohydrate and minerals. This right here is a willow, and you see how the willow? These two look really, really similar. Like even whenever I was standing here, because the leaves are so similar, I had to look at it for a second. But you can tell from the way that the bark is how the bark of the willow is this way. Oh. Do willows have thorns? No. 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 That's not. A, that's not. That's a Cindy, that is a oh. mesquite. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was looking at the at the bark here. That's what I was too, but that's not a willow. That is a mesquite. Yeah. All right, scratch that. <laughs> that's a willow. Which one? That. Black willow. Ah, uh, okay. So we were down here, and we were like, "How come we don't see any willow?" Yeah. Yeah. That we were like, that was yeah. amazing. Yeah. Here's here's the thing is that we, we were talking about if this could happen, building a sweat lodge down here. Ooh. And so we were looking for willow. Yeah. If we can get it from here, 
easier to pull out of the creek into the river and bring this would be a perfect spot for it. Until you get a major rain. And that's okay because willow they are curved like the oh, mother's yeah. womb. Yeah. So they act as the ribs. Yeah. And so because they hold the water, they can stand for a long time. Yeah. And so um, we usually lose 12, and I've made about four of them. Cool. So it's really, um, it would be great down here, I think. Yeah, yeah this would be a good spot. I mean, it would only take, if I had about six people, it would take four hours to put up. Wow. Cut down, dig, and put up. And that wouldn't be very long. Let me know when you need it. It is a good spot. I was thinking right about there. Because the grass is so nice and neat. But I think the rain did come down. Yeah, I was going to say this would flush right? out. Yeah, this will be a river. That's why it's got yeah. that ditch there. That's why it would be really good. Even if it was a little higher up in that area, that would be fun. Get that hundred deer flood that never happens. We were right. on Lake Proctor, we got one. Right. <laughs> and the, the telephone pole on the road that we drive back and forth is four feet high. That's how high it got. I we was were kayaking to the house. I didn't sell my house because it was an island at the time. Yeah. The house didn't flood because it was high enough, but it was an island. I thought. You could get it from the land next door. You could go along the high way to get there, but I just I would just kayak back and forth. I love Lake came up thirty the th lake came up thirty eight feet in about a week. Yeah. yeah. You, you look down there now and you say, there's no way water could fill this whole area. <laughs> well, the women come in first. Wichita, do ya, do ya, do ya. Wichita, do ya, do ya, hey. Washat, nay, ya, hey, ya, hey, ya. Washat, nay, ya, hey, ya, hey. Washat, nay, ya, hey, ya, hey, ya. Washat, nay, ya, hey, ya, hey. And that's the Cherokee water song. How cool. Yeah, thank you. That's it. <laughs> it's just clear. It's beautiful. Huh? One thing is it looks like when we were up that way a little bit more yesterday, it looked like there was like a little bit of a film on it. Huh, that's good. So the first water, the water is very important for our people. Obviously because water is life. But it's, everybody's born into water. Huh. The amniotic fluid yeah. is water. It's the most healing water you will ever know. And if for that reason, we need to honor the water. Because it was the reason why we're here. And so, when you come to water, you should always honor that water. I, you know, sometimes it's really like not clean water. And so we don't like to do that. But um, some people believe that you need to get into that water. Because that water needs prayer. It needs to be healed. It needs to know that somebody cares about it. It's a spirit. It's alive. And if you listen to the water, it'll tell you where you need to go. Mm -hmm.